everybody welcome back to yet another episode of our series power people which profiles the husos of the music industry and today on this episode we have with us kala ramnath who is an indian classical violinist we welcome you here today ma'am thank you thank you so much for having me on so yeah so so for, for my first question to you is that how has been your musical journey so far and what inspired you to pursue the violin and what drew your attention towards this classical indian classical music so i started music when i was 2 years old oh i come from a musical family uh-huh. and uh, yeah my grandfather started me on the violin at the age of 2 because mm-hmm. they predominantly uh, a family with a legacy of violinists oh my family so uh yeah so i'm the seventh generation in my family mm-hmm. for first four generations were vocal and mm-hmm. then the next three generations have been violin <laughs> so how is that matlab how has the journey how it has transformed you as a person also and for your career also um see my grandfather taught me music not because he wanted me to make me a you know famous violinist or okay. there was never any such goal the reason for teaching me music was because i hailed from a music family mm-hmm. and that is what my ancestors had done Mm-hmm. and my grandfather always felt having music in hand like you be good at it in case of difficulties in life you have something to survive upon mm-hmm. i could teach probably i could teach yeah. students mm-hmm. right yeah or if career is what i envisaged in yeah. then i i could take it up as a career too Mm, so oh, that's great. So, so how the reason my grandfather taught me music. Mm. Yeah. So he uh, taught me in a way that you know I started loving music and I cannot think of music apart from me. Mm-hmm. You understand? If it's mm-hmm. me there has to be music. Yeah. I, I cannot separate it and there is not one day I can think of where I can I have stayed without music. Hmm. My childhood there was one, never one day which passed by without me touching the violin or pra- practicing violin. Mm-hmm. The only one day I got was on Saraswati Puja, okay. and the instrument had to be kept in front of God for mm-hmm. uh, you know the puja. Mm-hmm. And the next day you take it out and you play. That was the only mm-hmm. day I got. and i didn't have to do anything i could sleep late i could do anything it became a way of my life for me hmm. and like going to school eating breakfast eating lunch having a shower violin became one i had to do hmm. on what day that was one chore i had to do every day but hmm. he made it so nice that i started loving what i was doing it was not a chore for me hmm So, how do you feel about the uh, you know global recognition of the violin as a Western instrument? I would okay. say, despite its roots in Indian classical music. Today, uh, let me tell you. I oh. just was with me, uh, Dr. L. Subramaniam. Okay. So I was telling him the same thing. Hmm. Do you know the? I mean, it was not called the violin, but okay. there was an instrument which hmm. was which looked similar to the violin. and which is okay. there in sculpture uh, in sculptures in the south even today mm. even oh. today you know that chidambaram temple mm-hmm. if you go in the chidambaram temple was built in the 10th century yeah. right mm. 10th century that sculpture is there of a, uh, uh, of a person playing the violin holding it and playing like this oh. and in the 8th century there is a temple in mysore mm. there there is a lady playing the violin sitting and playing the violin and then uh, you know in in the temple uh, the the shiva temple that lord ram uh, mm-hmm. when he was going to lanka 
you know, at the Kanya Kumari, at the point he created as, uh, um, uh, what is that, a uh, figure of Lord Shiva and did puja there, right? Mm -hmm. That became Rameshwaram temple. Yeah. In Rameshwaram temple, oh, it's the panel above on the temple, uh, what is that called, Gokuram, mm -hmm. you will find a person playing the violin there along with other instruments. Oh. And when was the Rameshwaram temple created? If Ram was 5,000 years before Christ, so it's 5,124 years. Oh. So that temple happened at that time. And in the Vedas, there is an instrument called Dhanur Veena. Yeah. Where Anu means a bow. That Veena which was played with a bow. And in mythologically, they say this was played by the Shiv gun for Lord Shiva to Richao him. He used to play this instrument because he was very fond. And Ravan was a great bhakt of Lord Shiva. Yeah. Mastered this instrument. So mm -hmm. it came to be called Gavan Astra. Oh. And it is today also, colloquially, it's called Ravan Hatta. Mm -hmm. You go to Rajasthan, you'll find it in Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. There is a hollow body with a string, some people play with the bow. It's a folk mm -hmm. instrument. Mm -hmm. You know why it is in Rajasthan and not in any other place? Mm -hmm. Because uh, Ra uh, uh, Ravan's wife, Mandodari, hailed from Rajasthan because she was mm. from Rajasthan. Mm. Mandodari, his wife. Mm. So, this instrument is something like which is 7,000 years old. Mm. And the first picture of the violin that you see in the West is yeah. from the 15th century. Oh. Yes. So, it's it's an Indian Indian instrument only because we don't know what it was called. Hmm. Okay, but that's but great. This this is an Indian invention which was taken to Europe, oh. and it is it is said. I don't know. I have I do not have concrete uh, proof about it. Mm -hmm. But the other things that I have I'm talking about the sculptures. I have proof with me mm. right now. Yeah, definitely. But the thing I'm talking about, uh, but it is said that during the 6th, 7th centuries, when mm -hmm. the Arabs came into India for trade, they oh. took our instrument and that, that became the Rababe. Okay. Not Rabab, Rababe. Rababe. And from there, it, uh, they, uh, it went to the, uh, it went to Spain in the 10th century. Mm. As the, uh, uh, during the Moors invasion. It went there and then it became the viol, then viola, it moved into Europe and then the violin, it became the violin in Europe. Wow. Actually, it returned back to India as the violin. So uh -huh. people who think that this is a Western instrument, it's not a Western mm. instrument. Mm. Because I, because when I, I play the instrument, Dr. Subramaniam, L. Subramaniam plays mm -hmm. the violin. So when we all play the violin, mm. We play it better than the Western counterparts. Mm. Why is it? Because there has been use of this instrument from before. before and the yeah. are amazed at our, at our ability and the uh, technique that we have to play this instrument, which they don't have. Mm. So it's, it is our own instrument. So there is no way it can be a Western instrument that can be mm. modified. No. Mm. Today they send it to us as our violin, but this was there earlier. I, I, can, I have so many pictures to show. Yeah, and definitely. One can go to those temples and see them today. Mm. Definitely, definitely. So, yeah. So, you have graced the uh, stages of numerous prestigious music festivals worldwide, including the Sydney Opera House, London's Queen Elizabeth Hall, and New York. And how was the experience for you? Tell us about it. See, 
it doesn't matter where i'm playing okay? yeah i don't know what i have to play i'm not thinking oh i have i'm playing at the uh, royal albert hall i'm playing mm-hmm. at the carnegie hall at sydney opera house when i'm going on stage yeah going on stage i'm going to do play w- my best yeah. whatever right and not looking at the audiences and thinking for this audience i need to play differently for mm. this audience, i need to play differently mm. but as soon as you go into that sacred space mm. where you're going to perform there is something there which works which neither me nor any other artist can figure out how this happens kind of no you can gauge the audience one look at the audience and you know what you have got in front of you yeah it isn't that second this is this is something uh, i mean which has no answer as to how this happens this is mm. just the almighty's grace mm. when you pick up your instrument and you play you are heard and your music is able to reach their hearts mm. how is we don't know Hmm. So, so you I recently do, also you performed at the Neeta Ambani Mukesh Cultural Center. Performing on the day after yeah. the performance. So okay. I am not thinking about the audiences or anything. That's mm-hmm. what I say. I do what I do, mm-hmm. but how it reaches the audiences mm-hmm. and how they uh, receive it and accept it and how it touches their hearts or whether the, they like it or not. in my case they have always loved it so it is the almighty's total grace otherwise so and they always feel that can the violin be played like this mm. because i play a totally different style mm. and i do things that the westerners cannot think of in the instrument mm. so for them it is like oh my god can the violin sound like this and mm. uh, how did you they always have questions as to how i uh, how how can i do this how can i do that and so flawlessly they have que- after the concert they come up with questions yes mm. and the so part- how do you uh, yeah they also believe that the instrument is a singing instrument mm. okay so they hear that when they listen to it and they say this is really the singing violin so So, so any you, of your favorite collaborations and performances you cannot you know you, that was unforgettable for you many i just last year i did something where, where i did a concert in the royal albert hall with yeah. frida kahlo's paintings oh wow i was interpreting her paintings through music oh wow uh, last year last year no year before last I did mm. that. When mm. I did, I interpreted composers of the nineteenth and twentieth century. Oh wow! BBC mm. Festival again in Royal Albert Hall mm. with the BBC Concert Orchestra. Oh wow! That's great. So that was the unforgettable that, moment. Yeah, and then I I wrote a violin concerto on climate, which oh. premiered with the Seattle Symphony. and now i am playing that with many many more orchestras like played played it with the long beach symphony then mm-hmm. uh, i'm going to be working with the national orchestra in ottawa on the oh. canadian government they have their own national orchestra and then i uh, i there are some concerts in mm-hmm. europe and, 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 and like with the, with the orchestras there okay so, yeah it's so, that that's something which i feel was uh it's something very very beautiful special yeah special. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so uh, kala ma'am how do you envision the future of the violin in india i mean both in terms of preserving its traditional roots and embracing its contemporary innovations so i just want to say that uh i w- i feel I was just talking to Dr. L. Subramaniam, and he started a new uh, 
you know, course of, uh, you know, with degrees and everything mm -hmm. tied up with UGC and stuff. So uh, he wants to teach music, get make good musicians, good violin players. Mm -hmm. So me taking over the North Indian tradition, which is what I play. So he was saying, this is what we need to do. So all the uh, universities which have programs in music, they are all theory oriented. They're not practical oriented. Okay. So how can we create more performing violinists? Violin is going to be, first of all, violin is a very hard instrument, the hardest of all instruments to play. And then, uh, because it doesn't have frets, Mm. So it's very hard to play. I mm. mean, it take uh, seven, eight years for the sitar. You need about sixteen to twenty years for the violin. Mm. So no instrument is as difficult as the violin. I I would consider voice the easiest. Mm. So uh, basically, we need to to for the violin. Uh, in I mean, in particular, we mm -hmm. need. We need to create more violinists, you know, mm. not oriented towards theory, mm -hmm. but practical, so that they can yeah. play, they can teach proper technique. Mm. Proper technique, will you be interested in taking up the instrument? Mm -hmm. So that is what we need to do. Mm. And as far as music is concerned, see, Indian music has been evolving with the times. Yeah. So for, you have to be relevant to your audiences. Mm. Like for example, whatever was sung 50 years ago, mm. sound good today. Is it relevant with the audiences? Like no. take, a, take a composition like uh, Aayega Aane Wala. That's a beautiful film song from mm. 50s or I don't know, 40s or 50s. Yeah. But today, will it be relevant with the audiences? No. No. It won't be relevant. It's a good mm. composition. I'm it's not good. saying yeah. that. But today's taste of the audiences, one has to be, mm -hmm. one, has to come, one has to understand that and know how to tailor your music to cater to that audience. Mm. So, so far as one can do that, I think this music will be alive, mm. always. Oh. Because this, this music is over, uh, I mean, seven, eight thousand years old, mm -hmm. right? Mm. I admit mm. 10,000, I don't know, because uh, from Vedic times, so maybe 10,000 years old. From then on, this music has evolved when the uh, uh, Muslims came into uh, the Persians and uh, you know people from the uh, uh, from from the West came into India. Mm. They tried to destroy. They destroyed our heritage, our temples, and everything. Yeah. But then people came back. They tried to destroy our culture, but our culture remained. Our music remained. And this is when we have not notated our music. You understand? Mm. Mm. This music is something which is passed on from the teacher to the student. Mm. It's still alive. Yeah, definitely. So as being an independent artist, do you, do you have faced, the, faced, you know, a struggle and challenges in the industry? See, everybody has to un uh, go through those challenges. And yeah, struggle. definitely. Don't become a musician. If you mm -hmm. have in a platter, then mm -hmm. let me tell you, to become a good musician, mm -hmm. you need to face those struggles, those rejections, the, the successes, you know, that makes you into a musician, This the, the disappointment and the sadness you experience, mm -hmm. this is through the music, mm -hmm. the happiness, the sadness, uh, the frustration, everything comes out through your music. So if you do not experience those uh, moments, your music is going to be very uh, dry and technical. Mm. 
not going to reach the uh, uh, listener. Yeah. Touch the heart of the listener. So it is very much necessary. And let me tell you, Zakir Bhai is the only exception. Mm. Who has, you know, as a he has come from his uh, father's lineage. His father was yeah. a big king, and mm. he also made it very big. Mm. Why, why did that happen? Because he was he was exposed to music from all around the world. Mm. Just not playing the plug. Yeah, he got that exposure. Mm. So. He understood, and do you think he is not faced? Uh, uh, I mean, struggle. He is not struggling. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. In his own way, yes. Every musician who's made a name today, they have all struggled, mm -hmm. and they have taken. Uh, it is a hard path, but mm -hmm. if you love music, then you will keep going on. Yeah, definitely. From what way you will keep going? Mm -hmm. You may be. Uh, what do you say? Uh, this uh, really uh, disappointed, and at times you may feel, "What am I doing here?" Mm. But still, once you love music, and just you know, playing a one good concert is enough to drive away all your blues and you know yeah. all your thoughts of, oh, "Am I good? Is this good?" All that yeah. goes away. Just one good concert. Hmm. Definitely, definitely. You're right. So, what we can expect in terms of classical music business in 2024, and what trends we can expect, and new challenges for the you know, for the Gen Zs and stuff like that. Ah. Uh, so, mu the music industry itself has changed from what it was before. Yeah, definitely. So, one thing that is, uh, that will not change. Is your effort that you put into music to become a good musician? That mm. is definitely you have to put it, and that is when. And then, of course, you have to be, uh, you know, you should know about social media and how to mm. do yourself, and it's all these things are very much needed as a musician. Mm. And uh, you know, collaborating with. Uh, with um, musicians uh, from different genres, yeah, different gives you an additional uh, what do you say leverage? I would say when you when you look for uh, concerts and everything, and uh, I think social media is the way to go for today's musicians because you never know one, one YouTube video or something. Real. Yeah, going viral. Yeah, you make your life, and um, and what else? What else can I think of? And uh, yeah, it's uh, all with singles and not albums anymore. Hmm, definitely. Yeah. It's yeah. So, can you share some of your upcoming projects or collaborations that are lined up in twenty twenty four? I have Triveni with Ustad Zakir Hussain and Jayanti Kumbaresh ji oh, wow. and at uh, Sydney Opera House in New Zealand oh. and then I have a Global Musicians Workshop with Silk Road mm -hmm. in, uh, in Boston and then I have uh, of course some concerts in England and oh, wow. again, another Global Musicians Workshop in Belgium. Wow, that's and, great. And I'm playing in, uh, doing a residency in Hawaii, University of Hawaii, and also okay. performing there. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, what do I have? Yeah, I'm playing in, I'm playing the World Music Institute in New York. Oh. And then, um, and then I'm playing my concerto, climate concerto in oh. Ottawa with the symphony orchestra there, their national symphony orchestra. And uh, and and what else? Yeah, I mean, I think that's yeah. What so finally, I, what message you would like to convey to the audience worldwide? I would like to say that to upcoming musicians, musicians, or, yeah, yeah, that you know, be at it, don't give up. You know, most important thing is 
you need to be a good musician before mm. everything comes up. Mm. You know, social media, all those things are there. But nothing works if you're not a good musician. Mm. So that is the most important thing one has to remember. Because these, once you get into social media, you're, you do not have time to practice. Mm. So first make yourself into a good musician. So that then you can, when you have to devote time for all this, you are still good at it. Mm. Yeah. Start doing both together. Mm. So thank you so much, Kala, yeah. for your time. It was our pleasure to have you here. Thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah.